There's no way y'all would rather be trapped in the woods with a bear over a man. All right, let's break this down so everybody understands why you should, yes, should choose a bear over a man. Not even just women, honestly, everybody should pick the bear. Reason number one, a bear is not gonna act any differently when it realizes there aren't any witnesses. The bear is gonna act like a bear. However, there are quite a few men who will act very differently upon the realization that nobody else is watching. Reason number two, bears do not wanna talk to you. If a bear knows you are in the woods, it will literally leave you alone. You will never see it. This is why the biggest safety advice to anybody who's camping in bear country is just to make noise. If you're with a group of people, have conversations. If you're by yourself, periodically just shout, bear. They also also sell bells that you can hang on yourself if you're a solo hiker that will continually make noise to let grizzlies and black bears know that you're in the area. So so long as you do not surprise them, it's very unlikely that you will encounter a bear. Millions of people camp every single year all across bear country, and very few of them have any direct bear encounters at all, and very few of those bear encounters are ever even lethal. Whereas if a man is alone in the woods with a woman and they hear a noise, they will likely do the exact opposite and go towards that source where they know there is another person. Especially if this is a nefarious man who knows that the other person in the woods is smaller and weaker than them. Reason number three, bears do not want to attack people. If you get attacked by a bear, it is almost certainly just due to one of two reasons. Either one, you startled it, or two, you ran across a mama bear with her cubs. And since you're alone with this bear, I think we can assume that this is not a mama bear with her cubs. However, there are men that do enjoy hurting and taking advantage of others, and will rush to the opportunity to do that once given the chance. Reason number four, bears are very predictable. If you've ever gone camping before, you've likely been taught how to scare off a bear. You make yourself really big and make a lot of noise, and most of the time they just run off. Now tell me, if you were a woman alone in the woods, how would you scare off a man? There is not a answer to that question. Remember, the question is not, would you rather get into a fist fight with a man or a grizzly bear? The question is, would you rather be stuck in the woods with either a man or a bear? And considering the bear almost certainly wants nothing to do with you and therefore will not pay you any attention, you should choose the bear. Today's topic is the heated man versus bear argument. The question was, would you rather be stuck in the woods with a man or a bear? The vote was unanimously in favor of the bear. And people have some very strong feelings about this hypothetical situation. And we're going to explore them today. Also, I'm going to come with some data to support why I would choose the bear. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section below. And I'll be right back. I'm not really sure why this is a debate, but here we are. And I've seen a whole lot of comments from people who don't understand women's stories or statistics. So to be clear, the answer is unequivocally a bear, and here are the two reasons why. First, the numbers. In the United States, there are 340,000 bears and about 57 million hikers, 26 million of which are female. Since 2020, there have been exactly seven women killed by bears and 15 non-fatal attacks on women. In the U.S., there are also 165 million men and 168 million women. Since 2020, there have been 8,000 fatal attacks on women by men and 1.6 million non on fatal attacks. Yeah, but what about adjusting for population size? Okay, fine. But first, just so we're clear, this is an impossible hypothetical because in the U.S., the departments of natural resources in every state regulate the population of bears and do not regulate the population of men. But sure, for the sake of this, let's do the impossible. In order to adjust for population, the number of bears in the United States would have to increase by a multiplier of 485 in order to equate to the same population of men. In other words, to get us to 165 million bears, which means you'd have to take that same 485 and make it a multiplier of the incidents. So in this hypothetical, 3,395 deaths and 7,275 non-fatal attacks, which means even in this impossible hypothetical of 165 million bears, you're still greater than two times more likely to be killed by a man than a bear if you're a woman in the United States, and about 220 times more likely to be involved in a non-fatal attack by a man than a bear. Oh, also, I should note, statistics on bear attacks are not infamously underreported, unlike the other side of the equation, where statistics show that only about one-fifth of violent encounters against women by men are actually reported. And less than one-fifth of those actually lead to an arrest, and less than one one-hundredth of those lead to a felony conviction, which means one percent of the ones that are actually reported, meaning not only that men who perpetrate these acts are much more likely to go free than they are to be punished, but also have the opportunity to do it again. Do you want to know what the punishment is for a bear who kills or even injures a human being? There are no repeat offenders, and there is no recidivism. Oh, and not to mention that most states have laws on self-defense against bears that are, let's just say, very favorable to the human being being attacked. Whereas, by the way, in the United States, when a woman who brings a legal claim of self-defense, they are two times more likely to be found guilty of a crime themselves than when a man brings up a claim of self-defense. It's almost, almost like we, like we just don't believe women or something. You know? Speaking of which, the second reason why the answer is bear. It's because women are telling you that it's bear. That's kind of all that matters. Y'all doing too much. This hypothetical question about this bear versus man in the forest is about to get a lot of y'all feelings hurt. Some of y'all women, you're doing too much. You are the bear in the forest. You need to be scared of yourself. 
at the end of the day, a lot of y'all are running around acting like you so scared of men, acting as if you fear for your life on a day-to-day -day basis. Girl, men don't even pay you no mind on a day-to-day -day basis. You go to the mall, they ignore you. You go to the store, they ignore you. You go to the club and the lounges with your homegirls and they talk to everybody but you. Men ain't worried about you. You could be in the forest with a bear and a man and you got a better chance of the bear wanting to smash. It's almost comical listening to a group of women who invite strangers from date naps to their house to smash on the first day are scared of men. I can't tell. I can't tell the way y'all be getting pregnant by strangers. Men who last names you don't even know. Men who mama you don't meet until the baby shower. I can't tell you scared of these men. Not the way you be out here giving out your address so freely and letting them come over there and Netflix and chill. The way you be going over their house when you don't even know them. Jeffrey Dahmer would have a field day with this generation and somehow y'all scared of men. You scared to be in a forest with a man? Be for real. Y'all are, are comical. Nobody even takes you serious at this point because you're a joke. Every time you get on this internet and open up your mouth, it's a contradiction and you're a joke bear or this man would you rather be alone in the woods with this bear or this man this video cracked me up because this man compared who he felt were the safest man options to go up against the bear which if you have to do that the answer is bear right but not only that the man versus bear conversation is really just pointing out how men have an issue with rejection they can't fathom the idea that a woman would choose anything other than man regardless of how dangerous they've even seen men to be themselves. He even went so far as to say that if you chose Bear over any of those men or all of those men, that you were delusional. Meaning that no matter how you actually feel, if you don't have an answer that agrees with what he thinks you should have, then you're insane. So not only do we have a man who refuses to take no for an answer, but we have one who, when you choose no, will tell you that you're absolutely crazy. Nothing about that feels safe. Now, I happen to be happily married to a man, so I'm a little bit biased in this conversation. But my last ex broke down the bedroom door with his head because I said I needed some time to cool off after an argument we had. I ended the relationship shortly after. But at the same time, I also used to live in the Panhandle of Florida, which has a kind of large population of black bears who would go into our trash the way that raccoons do elsewhere in the United States. And if you approach them, they run away. There you have it. And one last thing that has been bothering me about this whole thing is why haven't I seen any men ask the question, would you rather be in the woods with a bear or a woman? Is it because they know we would not care if they chose the bear? It's a guy walking around asking women, would you rather be stuck in the woods with a man or a bear? Just hear me out. One in six women will be attacked by a man her lifetime. Only one in one million people have a chance to be attacked by a bear. You live with and walk past in your life probably hundreds of thousands of men. You will probably never walk past a bear. You ain't watched enough nature documentaries, baby. So a lot of people tag me in this video because they think this man is a... <laughs> This man brings up a point that deserves exploring, and pun absolutely intended, I come bearing statistical receipts! Bears heavily prefer eating things like plants, berries, and nuts. They don't like the smell of folks. They'll eat folks, yes, but only if they're desperate, and that's highly unlikely if they're going to be in a forest. Bears very rarely attack if they're unprovoked. They're like ninjas. They don't use their powers unless they absolutely have to. From 2018 to 2020, there were over 50,000 reported bear encounters in North America. Only five of those people died. Since 1784, there have been millions of reported bear encounters in North America, and only 180 of those people have died since then. The reason lady folks are saying this is because male folks have so much more to gain from hurting them. Bears gain nothing, and the only way they hurt people is by eating them, and that pain is over much quicker in comparison to what male folks normally do. So I think their argument is a lot more sound than what you're making it out to be. <coughs> If I survive the bear attack, I won't have to see the bear at family reunions. The worst thing the bear can do is kill me. The bear sees me as a human being. After what those men did to that monitor lizard, the bears are not safe with men either. The bear doesn't get enjoyment out of it. The bear didn't pretend to be my friend for months beforehand. No one will say that I liked the bear attack. 
No one will talk about the bear's bright future. If the bear and the man both want to hurt me and I scream loud enough, there's a better chance that the bear will actually run away. A bear wouldn't film it and send it to all his friends. The men getting angry at this don't realize that there are fates worse than death. Ask Junko Furuta, Sadie Robinson, Shanann Watts, if they would choose the man or the bear. Are y'all realizing that myself and other women are saying bear because we would quite literally rather die? And then we have some people saying, well, not all bears, just because one bear did it doesn't mean that all bears would do it. You shouldn't be scared of all bears. Let's get a lineup of bears and you show me which one I should be scared of. In this target right now, you point out to me which men I should and should not be scared of. Well, I don't know. Exactly. At least a bear wouldn't show videos and photos and dap up their buddies after. At least a bear couldn't say the words, well, she liked it. She asked for it. A bear would probably leave you alone even after you were dead. To get most bears to leave you alone, all you have to do is scream loud enough. Can't say the same. Women are asking their guy best friends, their boyfriends, their husbands, their f fathers, and they're all saying the same thing. Why do you think that is? Bears don't grasp the concept of wrong and right, but you know who does. At least a bear didn't pretend to be your friend for months beforehand just to get what it wanted in the end. Oh, would you rather choose a bear or a man? <laughs> it don't sound like that lady wanted to choose the bear. It sounded like she wanted to choose the man instead. <laughs> if you were stuck in the woods, you know what? Let's flip the script. Fellas, would you rather be stuck in the woods with a woman or a bear? Let me know, because I, I think, you know what? I think I would rather choose the bear. Because at least with the bear, the bear's not going to just date me for my money and in the divorce take half my stuff or more. Like at first it was questionable. I'm like, dang, what's, what's more scarier, a woman or a bear? Because a woman lies. A woman will lie on you. You know how many football players I've seen get lied on and lose their whole NFL chance and career behind a woman lying, saying they did something they didn't do? Yeah, I think a bear. I'm going bear, bro. I'm going bear. I don't care. I'm going bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going bear because at least a bear is going to get it over with. A woman is going to rip me of my dignity and my freedom at the same time and my finances. So, yeah, I'm going, I'm going bear. <laughs> okay, so I found this article on the United Nations website, and I'm going to read some snippets of this article. The article will also be linked in the description box, as usual, if you would like to read the article in full. In 2022, around 48,800 women and girls worldwide were killed by their intimate partners or other family members. This means that, on average, more than five women or girls are killed every hour by someone in their own family. Globally, an estimated 736 million women, almost one in three, have been subjected to physical and or sexual intimate partner violence, non-partner sexual violence, or both at least once in their life, and that's 30% of women aged 15 and older. This figure does not include SH. The rates of depression, anxiety disorder, unplanned pregnancies, sexually transmitted infections, and HIV are higher in women who have experienced violence compared to women who have not, as well as many other health problems that can last after the violence has ended. So, all these women who are saying that at least when the bear kills you, it's over, this is what they're referring to. When you are hurt by a man in any of these type of ways that were just discussed, it can have lifelong effects on you. Depression, anxiety, sexually transmitted diseases that you can't get rid of. With the bear, it's over. Worst case scenario, the bear kills you and it's over. And like some people say, there are many things that are worse than death itself. Of those who have been in a relationship, almost one in four adolescent girls aged 15 to 19, which is 24%, have experienced physical and or sexual violence from an intimate partner or husband. 16% of young women aged 15 to 24 experienced this violence in the past 12 months.
Less than 40% of women who have experienced violence seek help of any sort. In the majority of countries with available data on this issue, among women who do seek help, most look to family and friends and very few look to formal institutions such as police and health services. Fewer than 10% of those seeking help reported it to the police. That means that there are women who are being abused and this is not being reported to the authorities so therefore we have no statistics on those numbers. Globally, 6% of women reported that they have been subjected to sexual violence from someone other than their husband or partner. However, the true prevalence of non-partner sexual violence is likely to be much higher considering the stigma related to this form of violence. 15 million adolescent girls worldwide aged 15 to 19 have experienced forced sex. In the vast majority of countries, adolescent girls are most at risk of forced sex, which is forced sexual intercourse or other sexual acts by a current or former husband or partner or boyfriend. And this is based on data from 30 countries. Only 1% have ever sought professional help. In 2020, every 10 victims of human trafficking detected globally, about 4 were adult women and about 2 were girls. Most of the detected victims of trafficking for sexual exploitation, which is 91%, are women. Analysis of court cases show that female victims are subjected to physical or extreme violence at the hands of traffickers at a rate 3 times higher than males. Now let's talk about bears. Let's talk about the rate at which bears actually hurt people. So these are the facts on bears for 2023. There are about 40 bear attacks on humans worldwide every year. 40, that's four, zero. For the entire year worldwide. The majority of bear attacks occur because the bear feels threatened and are protecting their young. There is only one fatal bear attack per year in the US. Humans are responsible for 71% of grizzly bear deaths. And we have an almost 1 in 2.1 million chance of being attacked by a bear. There have been 48 fatal bear attacks in North America from 2000 to 2017. And there have been no fatal bear attacks in California since 1980. 86. Now tell me again why I would choose to be alone with a random man versus a random bear. It seems to me that I have a better choice of being safe with a random bear than with a random man. Assault survivor. When I was 15, a 55 year old woman assaulted me and three of my friends at a party where she served a bunch of 15 year olds alcohol. Way to go, Granny. And I don't hate women. I've stepped in to defend women against attacks from men in city streets or bars. I can't say if they're all sexually related or sexually motivated. They probably were. But when we get to the question of this, I mean, like, I do empathize for victims. I get that. But the question isn't real. And we all know the question isn't real. It's hypothetical. I was just at a store. There are hundreds or thousands of people at this Walmart, men and women, walking around, doing their thing, minding their own business. Not a single woman in there was shifty-eyed, dysphoric, or afraid of any of the men in that store. I was just at a restaurant. I was at a bank. I was at a coffee shop. I was walking through a park. No one was afraid of men. Replace any of those men with one bear and see what happens. So because we know it's hypothetical, let's have an adult conversation. Ready? The existence of the question at all creates bias against men. I can trick you just the same way. I'd say, what do you think Islamic men use more to murder their wives with? Guns or knives or rope? The fact that I asked the question, you'd go, well, why is he asking that question? Do they murder their wives a lot? The question is safety, bear, man, alone, right? Those are the four real words in that question. It is embedding a bias against men. Every woman that has answered that question, bear, has stepped out in public sense has interacted with hundreds of men. The average woman will interact with 300 men per day. Maybe they opt for the bear just because they want to mix it up. They're like, I'm getting so bored with the thousands of men that I see every week that maybe I just want to see a bear. I don't think you understand the gravity of this question. As a abuse survivor, I'm standing up against a false claim against the nature of men, where one in a thousand men, or maybe just a hair over one in a thousand men, will commit a crime of this nature. That's a very thin number of men. 
And as a man whose family was responsible for starting World War I, you know, the assassination by the Black Hand, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, my family paid for that assassination. We started World War I, which is why World War II happened. Because I'm so closely tied to that genocide, I've studied it. And Hitler and the Germans used the same type of questionings and comparative logic to wage war against Jews. I am literally trying to stop thousands of women who don't know any better but then to participate in a trend from creating this wave of propaganda against men. Someone is trying to use this question against men and women think it's a cool dramatic way to say I'm afraid of men. But they're really actually not afraid of men. Because they wouldn't go outside. They wouldn't go shopping. They wouldn't walk through the park. They wouldn't do anything. They'd be so actually mortified of men. The question appeals to a logical fallacy called the fallacy of relative privation. They're trying to say that because a single man could do more harm than a single bear, that all men are more dangerous than all bears on average, regardless of the context of the interaction. That strips away all sense of goodwill or truth to the fact that women interact with 300 men per day on average. That strips away the truth that a woman per male exposure, if you walk down the sidewalk and you see a guy, you have a one in 35 million chance of being forcibly raped in that walk by on a sidewalk. That fallacy of relative privation strips all logic to the fact that men are by and large safe. But yeah, 81% of women will report being sexually harassed or assaulted. 43% of men, just the same. The number of people who will experience unwanted sexual contact, men and women, are roughly the same. Men will underreport at three times the rate of women. Men are victimized just as much, but we're stigmatized against talking about it. Both sides are victims, but men are not doing this campaign to smear women to try to damage the entire like gender of women. Except for me now, I'm doing what's called logical parallels. My whole argument for the last two weeks has been such. Since women assault children, their children, their biological kids at 2.5x the rate that all men assault all women sexually, then women should lose custody of their kids until they stop it because the phrase going around online right now is all men until no men. So until no women, all women, women do not deserve custody of their biological kids if any of them are capable of harming a child because children are innocent and honestly, all parallels aside, it's the abuse of children that is propagating people who are becoming monsters later on in life. So if anyone could make a decision right now to make the world a better place in the next 15 years, it's women not abusing their kids. It's already too late for us as adults. We're already screwed. We all have our trauma that we have to work through and that's gonna be a dog fight. But if we wanna guarantee the world's gonna be a better place, let's stop abusing kids. So the reason why women are choosing the bear is because it's not a real question and they won't have consequences if they answer in a dramatic way for effect. Just like the 30 something percent of boys that are like, well dude, if like there's no consequences, I totally take advantage of a chick. See, yeah, maybe people are bad people by nature, but people still obey the law. And that's why if 32% of college men would commit essay if there's no consequences, but then only one out of every thousand men will commit that crime, that shows how much people have discipline over their nature. And you cannot say the same thing about a bear. Okay, this whole bear versus man debate, I would obviously choose the bear and I'm gonna explain why in two reasons. Number one, the question was, would you rather be alone in the woods with a bear or a man? They never specified that I would be outside. They just said, would I rather be alone in the woods with a bear or a man? Alone could mean that I'm alone in a cabin and if I'm in a cabin, I'm a million percent picking the bear. Because if I'm in a cabin by myself, nobody else with me, and I look outside my window and there's a bear, it's fine. It's just a bear. He's supposed to be here. This is his hood, okay? He probably just wants to use my hot tub, okay? It's just a bear. But if I look outside my window while I'm alone in a cabin in the woods and I see a man, I am going to piss my pants. Okay, and then I'm gonna literally spontaneously combust because there's no way in hell. Okay, reason number two, now let's just say I do happen to be outside alone in the woods with the bear or a man. I would still pick the bear and here's why. If I'm gonna be in the woods, I would come prepared, okay? Because a girl like me, I don't go to the woods. I go to the mall, okay? I don't go to the woods. So if I was in the woods, I would come prepared. I would have bear spray, bear mace, whatever it is I needed to defend myself for a bear, I would be prepared. 
to encounter a bear. You can never be prepared to encounter a man. Plus, I'm sorry, but my vibe is literally just different. Like, if I encountered a bear, he would leave me alone because he would be like, she has good vibes. Like, her aura is mad different. Why would I mess with her? I can't say the same for a man. In real life, women are choosing the men and not the bear. But they're too scared to say it or some just don't say anything at all. Let me explain why. What we need to understand about this trend is that it's a hypothetical scenario that is trying to emphasize or to make a point about how women feel about men or being around men. So what women are trying to say is that men, you guys are not a safe space for us and we would rather choose being with an animal that would potentially kill us than to be with you because you are more dangerous at this point as i was analyzing the trend i noticed that like a lot of married women or women that are known to be in relationships were not participating in the trend which i found very interesting but luckily i came across a video of a woman that was basically speaking about the trend and she said that she feels like she's biased because she's married to a man so she can't necessarily choose the bay i was so grateful for her honesty because a lot of women that are married feel like they can't participate in the trend because if they say they're gonna choose the bear it's gonna say something about their husbands and people are gonna be like ah even you in marriage you're still choosing the bear ah that means these men you know you can't escape them even in marriage they're gonna abuse you etc for me personally i feel like even if you're married you can speak on the trend because it has nothing to do with romance and relationships but everything to do with the day-to-day -day experience of women all over the world but i understand this is the internet people don't understand that two truths can exist so i understand why they would want to protect their relationships or marriages so the reason why i say in reality women would choose the men is because we've heard like a lot of stories of women that came out being abused in a relationship and a few weeks or a few months later they go back to their husbands which can be very confusing for the public because how girl you just came out crying but now you're choosing this very same man that is abusing you but i've learned the hard way to understand those women because when it comes to love things are not black and white even simple things like let's say i made a video about the trend and i was like yeah i would definitely choose the bear not a man like definitely a bear and then the next day the trend is died down or the next week the trend is died down and then i'm back to making videos about i want a man to love me to protect me to care about me do you understand how it looks in the public like it looks like uh you're busy saying yeah you'll choose a bear you'll choose a bear but look at you now wanting a man and i need people to understand that just because you said you would choose a bear it doesn't mean that you don't want a man when you are choosing a bear you are speaking to a specific scenario a specific movement and it doesn't take away from the fact that you'd still want to be with a man and be in a relationship the same way if a woman said that she would choose a man over a bear it shouldn't eliminate what the trend is about or it shouldn't be seen as she doesn't care or she doesn't understand what is going on basically in regards to the conversation men are the only ones that can make life a living hell for us but at the same time are the same people that can make life so good for us and i feel like it's so scary how real that is that is sort of like men can see that today we'll be angry but tomorrow we'll want them again we'll love them again and i feel like that shouldn't be something that they take advantage of women are always gonna want men and i feel like a lot of men in the back of their minds think that we're not standing on business when we show desire to them one day and the other day we're upset about something that happened and i think that it's up to men to decide make a personal decision to not be the type of men to abuse women regardless of whether women are angry or they are happy like just don't be that person when mom Pincha passed away everyone was so relieved for babes like yo hi girl finally this man that abuses you is gone you're finally free you're gonna live a better life and people didn't understand necessarily why she was grieving and that's why i say that two things can exist like you can be mad that this man is abusing you and not understanding why he's doing what he's doing and wanting to call, call the police and seek help but at the same time be the person that loves him and still desires to be with him and i think if women are choosing the men 
that should be okay like we shouldn't judge it or feel like you know just because it's a trending thing on social media and we feel like we should all be agreeing to one thing there's just certain things that we're not gonna understand until you're in the situation so we should just always give grace and for men to always just do the right thing regardless okay so would you rather our baby daughter who's two be alone in the woods with a bear or a man a bear or a man mm -hmm. Which man? no further information is given what what man there's no additional information it would probably depend on the man there is no additional information available no additional information no <laughs> Man. Why, why is she alone in the woods? It's just why a... Is, a plethora of dogs not with her. This one, this one right here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> at this age, two? I mean, probably a bear, I guess. Because mm -hmm. the bear's just going to eat her like right away in one go. Yeah. Man's probably going to do some other things. And then just kill her anyways. And then a bear's probably going to eat her no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well just get eaten. Um, at 13? 13 years old. At 13. Probably still a bear. Yeah. Because you'd have the skills to like kill a bear. Or run and hide and get away from a bear. You're going to teach her how to kill a bear by 13 years old? Yeah. If I were alone in the woods, would you rather me encounter a bear or a man? I feel. I mean, is it a friendly man? We don't know anything else. It's just man or bear. I feel more like bear. I don't know, because I feel like I would know what the outcome would be with a bear, mm -hmm. even if it was like an aggressive one. I don't know what the outcome would, would be with like a bad man. Yeah. Um, so I think I lean more toward a bear. I mean, both situations, I guess you hope for a good man and a good bear. Yeah but I think you're more likely to anticipate what a bear would do mm -hmm. than what a man would do. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's continue the discussion. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and commenting, and I'll see you in my next video.